Good day, viewers. This is 300 Plus Academy, where all we do is exam tutoring, ensuring that you ace your next exam. Now, uh, we've dealt with the first group talking about specimen A and B, the second group talking about specimen C and D, now to the last group talking about specimen E, F, G, H, and J. Looking at specimen E and F, what are the uh, questions that we can have here, as you can see on your screen, the first question says, make a label drawing 8 to 10 centimeter long of the longitudinal section of E and label fully. So longitudinal section of pineapple fruit and label fully. That particular drawing, if you check the description of this video, all of the drawings that we might expect this year is already in that lecture video. Click on it and check out the drawing, how you should start, how you should label, and all of that. We move to the next question. It says, classify specimen E and F based on the type of fruit and then the life cycle of the uh, fruit. When you look at specimen uh, E, talking about the pineapple, specimen E, talking about the pineapple, it is a multiple fruit. Uh, more specifically, we call that sorosis. Sorosis, as you can see on your screen, it is called sorosis because it develops from fusion of multiple flowers into single fruit. When you check the scales on the pineapple surface on the outside, they appear as separate units and they are actually individual fruits, but then fused together uh, to form a uh, specimen E, talking about pineapple. So, the type of, uh, of fruit that specimen E talking about the pineapple fruit is, is that it is a multiple uh, fruit that separates units on the outside, but they actually, they are individual on the outside, but they fuse together to form the uh, uh, pineapple fruit. That is why it is called sorosis. And when you talk about specimen F, talking about the orange fruit, it is a very, more specifically, esperidium, meaning many seeded succulent fruit as you can see in the diagram on your screen. So that is how we, uh, the type of fruit that specimen E and specimen F is. Now talking about the life cycle of specimen E and F, they are both perennial uh, crops. You can have them the first year, the second year, and they could continue to live even more than two years. So they are perennial crops. So that ends that question. Moving on to the next question, it says that we should state the observable structural differences between specimen E and specimen F. What are the observable? In this case, it means the differences we can see physically uh, between uh, the, 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 the differences we can see. When we say stru observable structural differences, it means the differences we can actually see between specimen E and specimen F. Looking at specimen E, that's our pineapple. Specimen F is our orange. Specimen E has smaller seeds or no seeds. Specimen F, which is the orange, has bigger or larger seeds. Now, specimen E, the seeds are located, if they are at all present, they are located to the outside edge. That's on the uh, periphery, close to the edge. But, for specimen F, the seeds are centrally located. Specimen E has a large placenta at the core. At the center, you can see that on your screen. Specimen F has a small placenta. This placentation for specimen E is a free central placentation. While this placentation for specimen F, talking about orange, is exal placentation. You look at the shape of specimen E. It is oval or cylindrical shape. You look at the shape for the orange, the spherical or round shape. Observable structural differences is what the question says. Not differences that you cannot see. It must be differences that you can see. Moving on to the next question, it says, what are the mode of dispersal of specimen E and F? That's question number four. The mode of dispersal of specimen E and F is just animals. Animals are the ones that disperse uh, Specimen E, and if you say man or animal, and question five, it says, what are the similarities between specimen E and F? Observable similarities means similarities that you can actually see. 
Talking about specimen E and F, what are the similarities we can see? Look at the diagram on your screen. The epicarp or the mesocarp for both uh, fruits, they are hard. That of orange is hard. That of pineapple is also hard. The epicarp, the outside, is greenish. That of the pineapple is greenish. That of the orange is greenish. What you can see, observable similarities. Then on the inside, for the longitudinal section of the pineapple fruit, you can see succulent ends. When you look at on the inside, the part that we eat, it is actually juicy. It is succulent, succulent ends in the endocarp. And it is the same thing for the orange. It is also succulent on the inside, talking about the endocarp. So those are the observable similarities between specimen E and F. To question C, as you can see on your screen, it says, what are the economic importance of specimen um, um, of specimen F? It could be specimen F, it could be specimen E, any of them. You can be asked the economic importance, they are both fruit. So look at it. In case of, let's say, specimen E, for example, the pineapple, it could also be the orange, you see. As you can see on the answer on your screen to the question, economic importance of either specimen E or F, in the case of pineapple, it says, pineapple cultivation is a major source of income for farmers. Number two, it creates jobs across the supply chain from farming to harvesting to processing and distribution. You know, sometimes uh, when these uh, fruits are being harvested, it is being processed into uh, uh, juice for export and all of that. So it creates jobs across the supply chain uh, from farming to harvesting to processing and distribution. It is used by the processing industry to manufacture juices, jams, etc. Talking about the pineapple specimen E here, um, and that contributes to economic activity and uh, revenue. So those are the economic importance you can see on the answer on the uh, screen. Moving on to qu the next question, that is question seven. It says, states two other examples of the type, two other examples of the type of fruit to which specimen E and F belong. When you talk about specimen E, that's the pineapple, other example of fruit uh, that belongs uh, to the type of fruit of a specimen E here, you have the whistling pine, you have the breadfruit, you can see it on your screen. There are two other examples of the type of fruit to which specimen E belongs. And when you talk about specimen F, other examples of fruit that belongs to the type of fruit that's berry, that uh, specimen F belongs, you have garden egg, you have tomatoes. Moving on to the next question, question eight. It says, state the type, the food classes present in specimen E and F. The food classes pre present in specimen E and F and basically vitamins. Although they are both raw phages, they contribute fibers uh, to our food that aids uh, easy defecation and all of that. But uh, the vi there are vitamins in both specimen E and specimen F. Look at the question again. State the food classes present in E and F, vitamins. What sort of vitamins do we have in specimen E? Talking about the pineapple fruit, we have vitamin C, we have vitamin A, we have vitamin B, C, we have vitamin E, we have vit vitamin K as well. In specimen F, talking about orange fruit, this is a citrus uh, fruit. The major vitamin there is uh, vitamin C. Now, deficiency of this vitamin C is going to lead to a deficiency disease called scurvy. In this case, the gum is very susceptible to uh, bleeding. So take note of that we have vitamins in both, specifically in uh, 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 specimen F. It is a citrus food. It contains vitamin C, otherwise called ascorbic acid. Okay, lack of this vitamin C is going to lead to a deficiency disease called ascorbic bleeding of the uh, gums, pain in the joints as well. So that ends that moving on to the next question question nine now the way you're going to have this question you can see that on your screen you can be told because syringe is uh, a syringe without the needle is part of the uh tools 
or let me say the apparatus that you are going to be provided with in the course of this exam you can be told to break specimen g which is a raw egg and by the time you break the egg you may be told to use your syringe to extract the albumin the 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 colorless part of this raw egg and then put that into test tube containing water and mist to uh, get out so how do you get the question it says using a syringe extract the albumin of specimen uh, g about two mils put into the test tube containing water and then add about two mils of sodium hydroxide solution followed by three drops of copper two tetrazo surface seas solution you know and here we we're also told to state and give the name of the uh, test that we are performing here you can see the question on your screen also you know uh, the question can, could just go like put two cm cube of g in a test tube add one cm cube of sodium hydroxide solution shake the mixture add about one percent add two or three drops of one percent copper two solution drop by drop to the mixture in the test tube record your observation and inference so what do we expect in such case you see solution g plus one cm cube of sodium hydroxide plus one percent copper sulfate when you do this what you're going to observe is a purple or violet color purple or violet color when you add this this is a positive uh observation that means protein is present and as you can see in that particular question it says we should give the name of this test that have been performed that is actually buret test there are so many tests uh when we test for protein uh, one is millions test, another is the Santoproteic uh, test. But this particular test is the Buret test. We move to question 10. Question 10 says, name two other food sources of specimen G. Specimen G is raw egg, but the class of food that this raw egg is, is that it is a protein. It is a protein. Of course, the monomer of protein, as the smallest unit of protein here, is the amino acids amino acids when this specimen g is digested it is going to be broken down into amino acids and there are quite a number of enzymes that act on protein uh, we call enzymes that act on protein to convert them to amino acid are called proteases they are called proteases and examples of proteases we have pepsin we have trypsin, we have erepsin, uh, erepsin. These are enzymes that act on protein, converting them into amino acid. Pepsin, for example, is going to, pepsin and uh, uh, trypsin, they are going to convert uh, protein into peptones. Protein into peptones. Protein into peptones you can see that pepsin and trypsin this is in the stomach acting at acidic ph this here is at the duodenal loop they are as acting at alkaline ph they are going to convert protein into peptones then you have erepsin in the sucrose entericals of the small intestine is going to convert peptones into amino acids into amino acids maybe we could just have that talking about enzymes that act on protein because this raw egg specimen g is actually a proteinous uh uh food so proteases are the enzymes that can act on specimen g that said so for question 10 it says name two other food sources of specimen g meat and fish are sources of protein so uh, the next question says state two uses of g to the human body since specimen g raw egg is a protein what is it that what is the function of protein to the human body it is needed for growth and it is needed for repair of worn out tissues now the next question says what are the elements present in the food class of specimen g the food class of specimen g is protein and what are the elements there you have carbon you have hydrogen you have oxygen you have nitrogen you have sulfur you have phosphorus those are the elements that uh, makes up protein in specimen 
uh, G. And that just about ends that. The next question says, as you can see on your screen, make a drawing six centimeter to eight centimeter long of the longitudinal section of specimen J. Specimen J is the longitudinal section of boiled egg. We are talking boiled egg now. We've moved to specimen J and label fully. And label fully. Make a label drawing six centimeter to eight centimeter long of the longitudinal section of specimen J and label fully. You can see that diagram on your screen. For you to know how to draw, where to start, where to end, how you get through with your labeling. There is a lecture video that describes all of the drawings we can expect in this exam. Check the description of this video. The link to those drawings are in the description. Uh, that answered already. We don't have to draw now. Check the link, uh, the description of this video. You're going to see the link to uh, that. The next question says, state one function each of any three parts labeled. State one function each of any three part label. Now look at the labeling of the longitudinal section of the egg. So we want to talk about the functions. So you can see on your screen, look at the shell. The shell is for protection, aeration, shape, and gaseous exchange. You look at where you have the airspace. So the function of the shell, shell is one of the label part, and the function is for protection, aeration, you know, to give the, the, the egg shape and for gaseous exchange. Shell membrane is another one. It allows gaseous exchange. It allows for gaseous exchange, the shell membrane. Another one is the albumin. The albumin supplies protein. That is the function. It's a label part. That is the function. You look at the yolk. The yolk provides food for embryonic growth. It provides food for the embryo. If the uh, egg is going to develop into um, a bird. Now, to the last one, you look at the airspace. The airspace that is labeled there is for gaseous exchange. And then look at the chorion. The chorion protects the embryo or the yolk sac. So those are the functions of the label part. And with that, we've come to the end of this series talking about all of the specimen A to J on YF 2025 biology practical. From myself and the entire team, it's bye for now.